Hi, I'm Dave Wurzel and you're watching Spotlight on PHTV4 and the Spotlight today is on the PAWS organization in Tinley Park. Uh, I'm going to ask, I'm with Candy Staros, who's one of the volunteers here. Uh, Candy, what does PAWS stand for real quick? Um, PAWS stands for People's Animal Welfare Society and then of Tinley Park. Okay. And it, so it's a large organization, right? Um, it's actually a small organization and I know that a lot of people think that we are affiliated with PAWS Chicago but we are not. Um, PAWS Chicago is completely separate from PAWS of Tinley Park. Okay. So a separate organization, yes. uh, even though you do work a wide area in the, in the south suburbs or southwest suburbs, right? right. Exactly, yeah. We, we serve several communities, um, but not Chicago. Yep. How long have you been a volunteer here? Um, I've been here over 12 years. Congratulations. Uh, you know, I do want to mention also because so there, uh, people understand clearly, PAWS is staffed, but it's 100% volunteer, right? A nonprofit. Yes, it is a nonprofit organization. The only people who actually get paid, and they don't get paid a lot, but it's Monday through Friday, 6 in the morning till 10, and they clean. They do a lot of the deep cleaning for us. Everybody else completely volunteer. Everyone. So I say that's the other part of it. I know you said before you have a lot of dogs and cats right now. Obviously, you can't take care of them by yourself. Um, you got a lot of volunteers. Maybe not enough, but you want to talk about who else volunteers for you? Who do you have? Sure. We have a lot of volunteers. We're always in need of volunteers. In fact, we have a sign out front that says, um, need volunteers, um, apply online. So we're always looking for adult volunteers. Um, it's usually a four-hour shift um, once a week. Some people come more than that, and they can choose cats or dogs. But our application is actually online. We do a, um, a short orientation, and then we set them up with somebody either with the cats or the dogs to learn the ropes and to then um, take take on the responsibilities so we also have people who um, volunteers who work behind the front desk people who help with the adoptions people who help with fosters we have someone who does transport because we take in dogs from other um, other places so everybody kind of has their little niche um, we have someone who does medical we have several people who do medical on the cats and dogs but again everything is is totally volunteer as I say, it sounds like you have to have quite a staff to, to manage that. So while we're here to talk about, I mean, there is the option to ad adopt a dog or cat. You also would adopt some human beings to help out. Yeah, we would love to adopt a few human beings. More than that, um, it would be great. Yeah, and we do, you know, we have volunteers seven days a week, um, afternoons and evenings, 365 days a year on holidays. You know, someone has to come in and take care of the dogs yeah. and the cats. So yeah, we rely on volunteers and unfortunately we just don't have enough. So I, I hope the volunteers, I hope you get all the help you need. Obviously the work you're doing is so important and it, it, right, it's not like all of a sudden the dog doesn't need to be fed or the, the cat doesn't need attention. It's a 365 day deal. Um, the other thing that I think is so important and I know I saw it on your website looking at it, you're, you're a no-kill uh, animal shelter. Can you talk about your mission, your goal with your sure. with the animals you have here? Uh, absolutely. Um, yes, we are a no-kill shelter. Um, our mission, um, we have certain you know goals in our mission and that is to really help our communities um, to take in homeless dogs and to take owner give ups that you know perhaps they can't take care of their dogs anymore. Our, our mission is also to provide care for those animals, to get them adopted out into safe um, homes that work well for the family and the family works well with that animal. We also um, are big on educating the public. Um, we try to educate them of, of what the dog or the cat needs, um, immunizations, heartworm testing. Um, they're, all of our cats and dogs are microchipped. A lot of people don't know about microchipping. It's, it saves lives because if, they, if the animal gets lost, um, it can be tracked by a, a little um, chip in them. Not a, it's not a GPS chip um, by no means, but at least it um, gets them to um, a place where they can be, um, they can find their animal. And educating, we do, um, we participate in spay neuter. That's very important. Um, one of our mission, part of our mission is to um, decrease the pet population. Um, everybody knows that um, dogs and cats are, are in abundance. We, again, we, all of our animals, dogs or cats, puppies or kittens, they all have to be neutered or spayed before they, they leave the shelter and are adopted. We also provide a spay-neuter program where um, people can come in and buy a low-cost certificate to spay or neuter their pet. Um, we do not have a veterinarian on staff. I, I wish we did. We don't. But we work with some of the other vets in the area 
and they will honor those certificates so that the people don't have to pay as much money as they would um, ordinarily to get their animals spayed or neutered. When you talk about all that PAWS is doing here, I mean, it really is amazing because it, it is an, adopting a pet, maybe it seems like it should be an easy thing or a minor thing, but, you know, the owner needs to know how to care for that animal. Uh, caring for that animal is a huge commitment, you know, so the education in that, the health of the animal, uh, there's so many, let alone then the care of the animals, you know, here. So I, to clarify, you're all, you said you're staffed all volunteer. You're completely nonprofit. Like, I know you do collect some fees, but I'm assuming that's to offset any of the expenses you have here, feeding, medical care for the, the pets and Right. Um, like our adoption fee is pretty reasonable depending on the age of the cat or the dog. Um, we, I will be honest, we make no money whatsoever. Um, we are not a business, we're a nonprofit. We make no money on adoption fees. That goes to just to cover part of the cost of being able to vet that animal so we can get it ready to be um, to, to a safe home and adopt it out. You know, our medical bills range anywhere from $25,000 to $28,000 a month. And again, we have no funding. It is all um, donations, and that's it. Can be very, very expensive. Some of our dogs um, are, you know, they'll run us five, six, seven thousand dollars in order to get them to a point where they are adoptable and healthy. So um, everything is by donations. We run some events. Um, we try to get involved with as many events as possible to help um, raise funds. Say, so based on what you're saying, it's probably not even possible on an adoption fee to come close to covering all the expenses you have in caring for the animals. Eh? No, because they need their, you know, they need to be vaccinated. They need to have their rabies shots, cats or dogs. Um, they need to have microchips. They need to have heartworm testing. Any blood testing is expensive. Any lab testing is expensive, especially when you're dealing with older cats and dogs. We don't want to adopt them out without having some lab work done on them. Um, sometimes x-rays need to be done. It just all adds up, and we don't want to adopt out any animal that's not in the best health, period. And, and you're not even really talking about like the day-to-day -day expense of feeding it or providing the shelter for it or, you know, a place that it has as its home, so to speak, until something, hopefully, somebody comes along to adopt it. Right. And we keep our animals for as long as need be. Again, we are a no-kill shelter. Some of our animals have been in the shelter for well over a year, year and a half, but we find the perfect family for them. And um, we all applaud and cry when those animals get to be adopted. Um, so puppies are very easy to adopt out. Everybody wants a puppy. Problem with puppies is people don't realize the breed um, that they're they're looking for. They haven't researched it, and they come to find out that oh my gosh, puppies are a lot of work, and that's not what I expected. So we do get our share of owner give ups of of puppies, unfortunately, that um, they have either gotten from breeders or um, from friends, neighbors who have had litters of animals. So um, it, it's a vicious circle um, that we 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 work through. It, it sounds like so you get you you have only dogs and cats here right and and we, uh, some are where people have like they have a pet and like I can't handle this pet anymore I can't take care of it they bring it here where else do you pick up animals um, about about a third of our animals um, mostly dogs um, we always have seem to have a lot of cats we don't need to transport cats in but a lot of these shelters um, southern Illinois and even closer to home um, have over abundance um, their shelters are loaded with animals so about a third of our animals come from what we call transports they can come from anywhere from Illinois um, Hurricane Katrina we took animals from there um, we go where um, they come to us actually sometimes we will go to get them oftentimes the other rescues who are um, over burdened with the animals, they'll drop the animals off here. So we get them by transport, we give them by um, by owner give ups, probably about a third of those. And um, for whatever reason, um, medical issues that the family has that they can't keep the animal anymore. Um, sometimes um, the animal doesn't fit well after they've had a baby um, or a lot of little kids coming into the home. So that's about another third of our our intake and then the other third is unfortunately our stray animals we get stray animals probably on a daily basis um, most likely our cats um, that are stray but we get our share of dogs as well all right so hopefully i'm going to hopefully move to something that offers up hope um, 
because it does sound, you know, horribly sad, you know, strays or an animal, somebody thought they had a pet and now they're not able to care for it for whatever reason, it needs a home. Um, if somebody wants to adopt a pet, what's that process look like? How do they go about doing that? Okay, um, so what they can do is they can come in on any of our open hours. They can come in to see the animals. We have them sign in. If they do find an animal that they are interested in, then we have them um, go online um, through either their phone or their home computer and fill out an application for that particular animal. And then we review that application. If they have other animals at home, we do a vet check to make sure that those animals have been, you know, kept up with their vaccines and, and medical care. Um, if they're new and they don't have any other animals, um, it's a little bit easier because you don't have to do a vet check. But we um, take those applications, we review them, and it's not, you know, sometimes we'll get 20 or 30 applications for one dog. And it's not first come first serve. It's really who is the best match for the dog and who is the best match for the family. Right. I, the dogs have personalities. I, you know, it's not just an, I mean, it, it has its own certain needs, its own personality, and, and you want to try and pair those up as best you can, I'm sure. Yes, and same with the cats and the kittens. Um, sometimes we have kittens that need to have another kitten, um, part of the litter, adopted out with them. Um, and so instead of taking one, adopting one kitten, we ask that they adopt both of the kittens. And um, people are really generally pretty good about that, but it does help with their psychological um, upbringing and their behavior. So um, with dogs, um, we prefer prefer not to adopt out more than one dog at a time. Um, same with if they're a litter in a dog because as they grow older they don't seem to do well. Um, but most people just want one. <laughs> okay. All right well uh, Candy thank you very much for taking time. We wish you the best. I, um, I Maybe one last thing. You do show up at events in the area sometimes. You do have fundraiser. I know you have a big one coming up real soon I think right or yeah. in the fall. Uh, do you want to talk about, like, people can find you at certain places, or how about the other one if somebody wants to donate? They're like, I can't do a pet, but I, I want to help your organization. How do, how do they would, do that? That would be great. Um, we, you can donate online. You can come to the shelter and donate. Um, our events are always on our website, um, pawstinleypark.org. And the one that we have coming up, well, actually, it's not that us event. It's the... Um, National Night Out Against Crime. We will be in Tinley Park at their um, National Night Out for Crime. We'll also be in the Orland Park um, area for theirs in Orland Park. Um, in November, we will be having a bingo event, which is huge. And we have a lot of repeat um, customers that want to buy tickets for the um, bingo. It's, it's very exciting and it's well, well managed and we are well received. So we will have one, events coming up. I would say that bingo night, I think you mentioned earlier, that that thing does sell out. So if people are all interested, get online and sign up yes. for that thing. Yes, because it's limited to how many tables that we have and how many um, participants we can have. But it's always, um, it's always full. So get your applications now. You know, get your tickets now. I don't know when they go on sale, but I know it's coming up. Okay, so there, it sounds like we've hit maybe three, help me if I'm wrong here, three great ways people can help out PAWS. Uh, they can volunteer them their own time to come down, and, and, and it sounds like a variety of roles. I mean, there's a, a variety of ways you can help out. Uh, they can donate money, or they can adopt a pet and go through that process. Am I hitting them all? Yes, you are. And as far as donations go, it doesn't have, you know, we appreciate monetary donations because that really comes in handy for our medical. Um, but we are in dire, always, dire need of three things. Paper towels, bleach, and laundry detergent. Those are the staples. <laughs> we don't need food. We have food. We have leashes. We have collars. We have beds. But we are always running low on those three items. So if you want to donate that, we would be more than happy to receive it. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, so a variety of supplies, but at the top of that supply list, paper towels, bleach, cleaning stuff. Yep. Okay. And, yeah. Okay. And bleach and laundry detergent. That's all we need. <laughs> All right. Uh, Candy, thanks again Thank for taking you. time. Thank Wish you. you and the other volunteers here the best. Uh, you're doing great work, and, you know, let's keep finding homes for them, right? Thank you for having us. All right, good luck. I'm Dave Wurzel. You've been watching Spotlight, and we are at Paws in Tinley Park. Thank you for watching.